so I decided to play one chorus of solo and then uh, slowly get back to the melody again. So three choruses. Um, now, what I can do now is, for instance, I can say, okay, let's um, play a second backing. Now, this is a little bit tricky, so you can do several things. You can uh, basically switch off the first backing completely. And then you're just listening to the solo and trying to play the backing uh, in tempo as, as, as well as possible. Or you can just sort of keep the, uh, the old backing uh, playing at a low level so that you have a little bit of uh, support for the tempo especially. On the other hand, it can also be distracting because you're going to play a different backing which is not exactly the same. Um, Okay, so what I'm going to try to do now is uh, maybe a little bit weird. Uh, it's, it's certainly not uh, common practice, but uh, something I uh, something I do now and then. Um, so very often I just leave it as it is and I keep just this repeated backing track um, uh, because that's the quickest way to uh, to finish this recording. But uh, if I want to do it a little bit more elaborate, then I would record a new backing for instance for this chorus so that so that it doesn't repeat all the time now the tricky thing is that i've recorded it now without a metronome uh, so if i'm going to switch off the backing and just listen to this quite free solo it's it's pretty hard to keep the tempo so i'm going to keep this playing and just record another one over it which is going to sound a bit weird when you're when you hear that but of course, then after the recording, I'm going to replace this part of the backing with the new one. So let's see if I have sound on this third channel. Yes. So I'm basically going to record right over this one, even while this is playing. And that's going to sound a bit weird, but uh, let's see how that goes. Uh, also, I'm going to uh, add some reverb here as well. A little bit the same. Let's like like this. Uh, and I'm going to add also again some uh, boost around 5 kilohertz roughly. A bit like this. Uh, let's see. Maybe a little bit too much reverb still. Okay, uh, let's turn this down a little bit. Okay, good enough. So I'm going to record a new backing for the second chorus. Here it goes. Okay, so there it is. Now I'm going to replace that the old backing with the new one. So I'm going to find again the uh, I'm going to find the starting point. So it starts here. And where does it end? That's where it ends. Sorry. This. Yes. 
And I'm going to remove that part, replace it with this part. I think there's a way to copy this so that it doesn't shift, but I, I'm not sure how to do it. So I need to learn a little bit more about Cakewalk. But anyway, I'm just to, going to do it by hand. Especially since I'm not using any fixed tempo or metronome, anything, everything is a little bit loose anyway. So this should normally be okay. Let's see how that sounds. <laughs> to listen without the soloing because it's a bit distracting so we mute that track ah here yeah, you hear it's too soon I've shifted it by accident so it's a little bit too early yeah good enough for now so then obviously it will be okay here as well There's a little bit of uh, click there. Ah, it's cut off actually. So. You know, again, you see here a little bit of change in the volume. Uh, th those are things you can fix later. I will fix that at some point, but I'm just going to continue now to uh, playing an ending. Um, so I'm not going to use this part actually. Uh, let's play an ending here. <laughs> 